so Unreal Engine 5 came with new features and new workflows, but also allow us to discover new workflows so that we can create bigger worlds in a very efficient way. And in, what I'm gonna show you now is a new workflow that I learned from the demo from Unreal Engine 5, how developers use the assets to create really big worlds and what's the philosophy behind it. So here in my scene, I have a traditional workflow where I just have a mesh and I just duplicate it and I create my path. So when I play here, now I can see my cliff here. In level design, we can create different kind of shapes so that we can, let's open up this one here. We can create like a square shape. We can create a triangle shape. We can create a cylinder so that the player can come through this path and have a very unique path. So a typical level design from this would be like, I don't know, let's just have this one here and then the player goes here and then have another one here and then have another one here. Kind of like a city building here. And this is like the top down of this so that the player can go to into many of these directions. And this is what we will do now. So I'm gonna show you how we can use mega scans and blueprints to create level design kits for Unreal Engine. And you will see that after you use this, you will be able to create levels much faster. So let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna open my uh, a content browser and I'm gonna create a new blueprint. So I'm going to my stupid leveling blueprint and I'm gonna name this blueprint cliff and let's just say large zero one. So this will be a large asset. So I'm gonna open my blueprint. And what I'm gonna do now is to add an instance static mesh. And by default you will see that nothing has happened and the reason is we haven't put a static mesh. So let's create, uh, let's put one static mesh here. If you want to select one static mesh from here from your viewport, control V, V, uh, and you will get to the asset folder. So we can put this one. And you can see that nothing happened here. And the reason is we are using instance static meshes. So what we need to do is create uh, an instance from this. Uh, you can see here right in the instances in the details panel I have instance and I have zero array elements so if I keep click add now I have a new one and you will see that now I can see my cliff and now I can move it here. Notice that if I move this one I'm moving like the origin but if I add another one I will be able so let's just use this one. So what do we do from here? Well, we can duplicate it. Now we will have two of them and we can move the location just like this. We can move it a little bit here, scale it a little bit. We can add another one. And notice that if I move this one, I'm only moving the first one. So be, be aware of that. Check the index you wanna move and keep moving it. You can also scale it by negative one and you will have like a, oops, what happened here? Let's do it again. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just keep duplicating those until I have a shape I want. Right, let's move to another folder where we can add another mesh. Maybe this one. Let's check how this one looks like. Okay, so this is a smaller one. We can add this at the end for some variation, but let's create our shape first. So what I'm gonna do is to duplicate another one. Actually, I duplicate those. Move this one. Oops. Here, and then rotate just like this, move the y-axis a little bit, all right, 
so now let's put another one and I'm gonna continue doing the same until I have created my shape so can put something like this keep duplicating those I think you can copy and paste this one copy and let's try it paste oh Jesus let's let's go back <laughs> okay uh, let's move the location of this one oh maybe minus a hundred yeah there you go perfect okay keep duplicating those until you have something so where is our uh, there you go rotate this move this one great let's try it out in our level so you can see how different this is so we're gonna duplicate this one okay we're gonna save compile and what we're gonna do is to go to our content browser let's browse our blueprints and here I can have my blueprint here so if I click this you can see I have my blueprint here and I can create different paths here I can do something like this or I can do maybe something like this maybe not like this because it's <laughs> rotating in another way but um, you, you can see how powerful this is and when I play my game I can I can have a pad here and then I can duplicate this one I can put it like like this and I can continue updating my blueprint until I have something that I want so let's say I have my level design here and my player starts from here then I can just move these big blocks in position very easily and if I don't like something let's say uh, this one is too far from one another I can just move this one here and I can just do something like this to have a narrow valley and then it's, you see, can see how easily it is to move all these objects and if, I, and if I continue doing this let's say I want to add another one we can continue doing this like let's rotate this one rotate again okay just like that keep rotating those and now I can close this by perhaps I could duplicate this one let's try it yes I can duplicate this one and what I can do is to move it actually I'm gonna create a root here um, let's say just add something here so we could add the like, uh, different ah, uh, scene uh, this is at the scene and duplicate this one and this will be in our scene so we will move our scene and we will duplicate like this just like that look at that okay let's make sure there is no gap and here what I can do is to close the gap here so let's go back to our instances and let's duplicate this one and what we can do is to translate this one a little bit let's put like 1000 we need more than that so let's rotate this one and let's move it in y direction 
let's go back to zero. Please don't crash. Three. Let's see, two thousand minus two thousand. Okay, I, I believe we can remove the snapping. Great. Now what I can do is to rotate a little bit here. There you go. And now you, what you can do is to move to one of these instances randomly and you can scale it like, for example, you can scale on Z axis, you can scale like 0. Point, let's put 2 to check. Okay, so it's this one. So let's, we can point 0.1, have like a bigger one and we can go here and select one of those like 1.3 or 0. 0.95 to have just some variation here. Okay. And now what you have is this block. And you can create different types of blocks just by using this method. So very easily we can create different levels here. Let's just say you want something like this. And then you want to create something like this. There you go. And you want to maybe close this one just like that and this part you don't need to worry about because the player won't see it and when we play let's just say our player starts from here you can you can have this very quick level design that you can use there is one more tip before this wrapping this up and that is uh, we can still expand this and add other meshes for example I can, if I wish, if I wish to have, and this only works if we have kind of the similar mesh here in terms of radius. So we can change this mesh. Let's just say, well, let's use another one. Let's use this one. And we can change here and we will have a completely different setup. So make sure the sizes are right. But the other, another thing you can do is to add another instance static mesh and this will be in the default route just here okay and you can add another cliff let's just say you want to add this one and you want to add another instance here let's just try to find it one two three two collision lining so there you go. So what you can do now is to basically translate this thing just like that. And you can have different instances to add some variation to your environments. So for example, I can move this one like 500, 5000, no, 2500. There you go. And I can see it's like here but I can rotate it a little bit right I can scale it up if I want uh, and with this method I can break the variation so when I come here let's just find one part just like this now we have something that you know it's uh, the scale is lower and this one is bigger and then you can break the variation so that no one notices that we're using the same asset and you can expand on this and you can keep adding and adding different things here so that you can have your kits so this kit it's extremely useful to create environments really fast and you can extend this to many different ways so in the coming videos I will show you more tips about how to use these kits and I will show you some tips so you can enhance your environments just by using this method. So if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments which kind of video you would like to watch and let us know if this, was, this one was useful or not. And also in, check the links in the description if you're making an RPG game, you can get some help there for free. And I'll see you in the next one.